Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. If you're in search of a family-friendly pleasure boat that transforms into a tournament-ready fishing platform, we'll be taking a look at the Nautic Star 251 Hybrid. I looked at this boat and thought, this is kind of a sandbar, cruisy type of boat, but this is a serious fishing boat and it's all business. If you require a family-friendly boat designed with blue water fishing capabilities, we'll be looking at the Sea Chaser 27 HFC DC. This boat goes from fishing to cruising in the blink of an eye. It's ready to do almost anything you want to do on the water. And for the boater that desires a smooth ride to those distant fishing grounds, no matter the conditions, we'll be taking a look at the WorldCat 295cc. You can transform this boat to what you need for the day, whether it's fishing or family fun. It can do both. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Welcome to another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Guys, you know what I love about this year? We have got more innovative boats this year than we've ever had before. Yeah, the Nautic Star 251 Hybrid, this boat, I think this boat epitomizes versatility. No matter what you want to do on the water, this boat's got a little bit of something for everybody. I don't care if you're going tubing, if you're going snorkeling, fishing, diving, if you're going to go just hang out at the sandbar, this boat checks all the boxes, got a lot of luxury style, and what a great riding boat. Absolutely, George. And then I stepped on the Sea Chaser 27 DC. You know I love a dual console. This one was really set up to have some playtime. And it had a little galley in the back with a sink and a grill. Couldn't beat that. I got to tell you, the WorldCat 295cc just finally beat me into submission. What a great ride. And they get better looking every year. This was a good one. You got that right. Hey, we got a lot to get to. What do you say we dive in head first? You ready? When we return, our hosts take a look at a bay boat designed with family comfort, functionality, and fishability in mind, the Nautic Star 251 Hybrid. But first, let's join our host, Lori Hargrave, as she discusses the importance of boater education in this week's seminar series. Today, we're gonna to discuss the importance and the requirements of boating safety education. In Florida, the law is if you were born on or after January 1st of 1988, you are required to have a boating safety education ID card. Now, all that is is a course that you can take online or at a learning center. There's plenty of courses offered. Some are free, some are at a cost. Whatever is more convenient or what appeals to you, go for it. If you really want to take the extra time, go ahead and look into where there's a physical school that you can go to. Here in Stewart, Florida, we have the Chapman School of Seamanship. What better way to learn and to educate yourself than to physically be on the water? And here at the Chapman School, you get hands-on learning experience with U.S. Coast Guard certified instructors. Whether you're an experienced boater or new to boating, rules and laws of the water are very important. Safety first. When everybody knows the rules and the laws, we work together and we have a safer waterway. For more information on where to obtain your boater safety education requirements, just visit FWC.com. This segment brought to you by FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Hey, nice boats. Thanks. Borrowed it from a friend. Do I need to wear this? I don't know. <laughs> so where are we going? I don't know. Paddling is one of the greatest ways to enjoy Florida's waterways, but always make sure you are prepared for the journey by getting your boating safety education. Regardless of your experience, know your limits, and always wear your life jacket. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they take a closer look at the Nautic Star 251 Hybrid. Representing the Bay Boat category, the Nautic Star 251 Hybrid has an overall length of 25 feet 2 inches a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 350. Designed to easily navigate shallow inshore waters and handle a chop in the bay, she has a draft of 15 inches. 
a dead rise of 16 degrees, a dry weight of 3,650 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 75 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Okay, gang, we're on the Nautic Star 251 Hybrid today. Now, this is clearly a really cool fishing boat, but Lori, your eyes lit up as soon as you walked down the dock. There's a lot more going on than fishing on this boat. What's it saying to you? Get me to the sandbar. I know you guys want to fish, but listen, I'll give you your time. I want to take this to the sandbar, utilize these seats, coolers, the storage, there's a head. I am so ready to go play. Lori, I tell you what, I'm glad I'm going to get my fishing in this morning because I promise you, when I saw this boat come last night, I thought if Lori sees this, we're gonna have six kids and a very fat dog that's gonna be joining <laughs> us at the sandbar, right? Yes, sir. Let's go, you guys. I'm gonna give you an hour to fish and then you're taking me to the sandbar. I looked at this boat and thought, this is kind of a sandbar cruisy type of boat. And as we idled out through Manatee Pocket, I'm looking at the boat saying, this boat is really set up to fish. You know, part of my initial impression probably stems from the fact that the boat does have a lot of luxury looking trim on it, covered in sea deck, and it looks really trimmed out. But this is a serious fishing boat and it's all business. The secret to a great live well is circulation. You've got to have enough water flowing through and you've got to have enough room for the bait to move around. Well, once again, Nautic Star made the maximum use of space and built good wells. So I saw the bait running. I knew I had to make a move. I literally like jumped over the bow seating, got up onto the platform, started casting out, never felt unstable, plenty of room. The Nautic Star showed its versatility right off the bat. We ran offshore to catch bait. Lori was able to be up in the front working with that well. I was working on filling the well in the transom. Before you know it, we have plenty of bait to start today's fish. While Rick and Lori spent most of their time in the cockpit or up on the bow working live baits, I got to enjoy the shade at the helm underneath the oversized hardtop. Throughout the day, both fishing and navigating, especially at times of low sun, it was very easy to read the twin 12-inch displays on this unit due to the blacked out acrylic dash panel. It's amazing how wide open the Nautic Star seemed for a 25-foot boat. That's because the supports for the T-top were made out of D-tubing. That's tubing that actually comes in and integrates with the console. You could run from the bow to the stern with no obstruction, wide open deck. So fishing today, you didn't see the stern seating. That's because it literally folded right back into the boat, which was great for fishing, opens up a platform, and then when you're done, you just pop it right back out. It actually lifted up and had storage underneath it. I thought, how great is this little storage compartment for everyday use when you're out in the water with masks and snorkels and just the little stuff that you need to get to a little bit quicker in your day. Lori and I rode back on the bench in the back seat. Could not have been more comfortable in a boat anywhere near that size. The sweet thing about the Nautic Star is you can do so many things with it. That meant carrying a lot of rods. Boy, the undergun rod storage came in very, very handy. You've got rods in the rocket launcher behind the seat, you've got rods up in the T-top, and rods under the gunnel that we were able to grab to switch styles of fishing in seconds. Now this 251 Hybrid was the kind of boat you commonly see rigged with a bow-mounted trolling motor. And while this boat didn't have a trolling motor, I had absolutely no problem holding my position in about five knots of tide with anglers both on the bow and in the stern throwing baits at a seawall. I'm a big fan of the bow layout on that boat because you've got so many different options. Being able to stand deck level, being able to stand up a little bit higher, or being able to stand up on what is a small casting platform. There's different applications for each height, and they've got all three of them covered. In the three years I've been hosting Best Boat, I've spent a lot of time on the sandbar. Actually, more time than I had in my entire life prior to this. Now, I'm getting used to it. It's actually really enjoyable, and this boat was ideally suited to run up on the beach and stop and eat a nice lunch. Very enjoyable. Super easy setting up this table, literally two steps. All I had to do was pop the leg in and put the table on top and we were set up for the day. Yeah, you're combining the features that you'd find on a fishing boat with this luxury seating type of stuff. I mean, for example, you've got an insulated fish box underneath where I'm seated here. There's a rod locker underneath there to stow things. Actually, you're sitting on top of a Yeti cooler there. Another thing, you know, at the sandbar that I really am impressed with and you see more of it, how about the forward boarding ladder on here? I mean, easy to get off. How hard is it for us to jump off and then scramble back up in the boat? Not so much with this boat right here. So lunch is over, time to clean up. That table was super easy to put up, super easy to take down. Again, two steps. Got it up, went right to the console and put it in its resting place and we were ready to get back to our day. Well, we didn't get to do much fishing, Lori, but we definitely saw what this boat's all about. What's your opinion here? 
it was perfect for my family. Well, here's the reason it'd be perfect, okay? For starters, you can get it in 15 inches of water, which you can't do with an offshore boat. That gets you to a lot of places you want to go in the Keys. You can carry plenty of live baits for you. You can run out to the humps in the evening to fish for tuna and mahi if you want to. There's an awful lot of things this boat will do well while you're very relaxed. It's not just that, Rick. It was the storage for me on this boat. Everything I have for my kids, between fishing rods and snorkels, that everything has a home. If you're looking for a family boat that does a ton of different things, this Nautic Star 251 Hybrid is going to be hard to pass up. When we return, our hosts examine a boat built for the family with plenty of innovative features. The Sea Chaser 27 HFC Dual Console. This segment brought to you by Suzuki, the ultimate outboard motor. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they take a closer look at the Sea Chaser 27 HFC DC. Representing the dual console category, the Sea Chaser 27 HFC DC has an overall length of 27 feet 3 inches, a beam of 9 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 600. Built with the family in mind, she has a draft of 20 inches, a dead rise of 22 degrees, a dry weight of 6,244 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 189 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. One of two models we saw this year from Sea Chaser was a 27 Hybrid Fishing Cruise Dual Console. Now, the more time I spend on dual consoles, the more I realize what a great design this is for a family. The bow area on this boat was the party hangout area today. We had our speakers, our cup holders, and a great U-shaped seating arrangement, which was really comfortable with the bolsters. Under your bow seating, on your port side and starboard side, we had great dry storage today. When it was time for lunch, all I had to do was pop in that table, and now we have a great booth-style seating arrangement, which we all enjoyed today. When I'm running a boat, I want my fish gaffed up front. I don't want them gaffed anywhere back near the motors. And they put the fish box in the perfect place up front we can gaff him, throw him in the box, close the lid, and he's done. One of the beauties of a dual console design is the ability for you to divide your boat up into three separate areas. You've got a forward area for a lot of relaxation and socializing and seating up there. You've got the center area to get out of the weather, stay in the shade. The rear part of the boat, the cockpit area of the boat, is where you're going to do most of your fishing and water sports. You can do all of the activities that we love about boating, such as fishing, diving, in and out of the water from the cockpit on this boat. It's big, it's roomy, it's got rod racks across the transom. The boat is a serious fishing machine with a lot more storage and seating than you're used to on a single console. Live wells have gone from being an add-on to a boat when you built it to a science all to their own. I believe they're best when they're round, Sea Chaser checked that box, and I think they're best when they're dark, and Sea Chaser checked that box with a blue live well with a clear lid to where you can see your bait in it. I like the design of the live well in the Sea Chaser 27DC. I loved having to sink in the transom. You just wash your hands off, go back to fishing without leaving a mess. I take so much tackle with me. I gotta be ready to live bait fish. I gotta be ready to pull ballyhoo. Gotta be ready to bottom fish. They had such good tackle areas in the cockpit. It made the boat so easy to fish. George and Rick got their tackle station today, but guess what I got? I got it my own personal galley today with a built-in grill. Not only did I have a grill, but I had a little refrigerator. I even had a spot for my garbage can. What a great setup. And that counter space on this was incredible. I had so much room to make lunch. I tell you what we're seeing more and more of on offshore fishing boats is these side doors. Now, when they first came out, I was really skeptical. Do I want that hole in my boat? Well, yes, I do. It makes it super easy for people stepping on and off the boat, whether they've been in the water or they're stepping in off the dock. And when that fish of a lifetime comes along and you can't lift him over the gunnel, you can slide him through the door just as easy as pie. 
Getting on and off this boat at the transom, really easy with the telescopic ladder. Not only do you have a great ladder set up, but when you come in through that dive door, you've got your fresh water wash down. Talk about a really nice luxury feature on this boat is the seating on the port side behind the console. There's two seats, but it can convert into one lounge. Really, really comfortable, but that's not the best part. There's an electronic lift that lifts up the seat, and now you have even more storage. There's seating all around the boat. This boat goes from fishing to cruising in the blink of an eye. It's ready to do almost anything you want to do on the water. This boat ran like a champ. It tracked really well, and I was really appreciating that hard top. I found it to be just at the right height. Sea Chaser brings a lot of luxury items that would normally be considered upgrades into the deal as a standard option included with every boat. I opened up that port side console. Not only did they have a flushable head in there, counter space, fresh water sink, and cabinet space for more storage, but this is the kicker. You still had plenty of stand-up room. I can't believe they got all that into one of the consoles on this boat. What I like about the starboard side console is that it was just clean and open. So it's whatever you want it to be. This boat is truly for the fisherman and the family man. And I can say that. I come from a line of pontoon boats. My husband and I really enjoyed them when our boys were younger. And as they got older, we kept realizing we want to go further offshore, but we also still want the lifestyle features that a pontoon boat has given us. This boat, you have the best of both worlds. It gives you that lifestyle feel of familiness that a pontoon boat gives you. But guess what? This boat is going to take you into deep blue water offshore with the family. Best of both worlds. When we come back, our hosts take a look at a boat designed for handling rough seas with ease. The WorldCat 295cc. This segment brought to you by Ingle, the best performance coolers on the market. Wake up early on your days off. Go on an adventure. Get out on the water. Here at Ingle, we live for these days. We think you should spend more time in nature. Let us help you enjoy it. For those that care about quality, who want to get out into the world with a confidence that their gear is going to stand up to the day's challenges, Ingle Coolers are built for you. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they check out the WorldCat 295cc. Representing the 27 to 32 foot class in the center console category, the WorldCat 295cc has an overall length of 29 feet 1 inch, a beam of 9 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 600. Engineered for speed, stability, and blue water fishing, she has a draft of 15 inches, a variable dead rise, a weight of 8,000 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 233 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. All right, George, Rick, today we're on the WorldCat 295cc. I'm excited for fishing today, and I'm excited to see all the options that this boat has. But what I found out this morning that this is the fastest boat in the World Cat lineup. So I'm actually excited to see how the boat performs today. You're right, Lori. You know, cats haven't been on the American sport fishing scene until about the last 30 years or so. Not only is this thing fast, but World Cat was in the beginning of the innovation into cats. And this is the result of 30 years of evolution. I can't wait to see how it performs. I'm looking forward to digging a little bit deeper into the differences and how these things handle compared to a traditional mono hull. Also looking forward to doing a little bit of fishing. What do you think? You guys ready to go uh, give her a lick? I think we're always ready, George. <laughs> All right, let's do it. One of the reasons why catamaran style boats have become so popular is the ride. A catamaran boat, unlike a mono hull boat, is gonna surprise you when you go into a turn. And for this reason, a lot of people are kind of freaked out by it. Once you get used to that though, you're gonna find that this is a super stable boat that really cuts through the water well and provides really good fuel economy because of it. This particular boat will give you two miles per gallon at 30 miles an hour cruising, and at over 50 miles an hour will still give you one mile per gallon. Now those are good fuel numbers. Listen, if they ever designed a cat for me, this was it. The reason why, this was their fishing boat. There were lots of features on it that I couldn't wait to get offshore and check out. The World Cat had a 42 gallon live well in the rocket launcher and there was constant water moving through there. That means at the end of the day, every bait that you don't catch a fish on or get a bite on, 
you can release and let it swim away, and that's exactly what happened to us. Well, one of the things I like about them best is the way they drift in a beam sea. We had a little northerly current yesterday, and that Whirlcat just laid perfectly, and that made a huge difference. It enabled us to get one more bait in the water. Because this is a catamaran boat, the beam is carried all the way through, all the way to the bow. So it provides you with so much more room up there. You can sit up to six adults very comfortably. I love it when a plan comes together. Alex Flora, the rep from Whirlcat, had never caught a sailfish. Well, she has now. And let me tell you, she had to go around the boat a half a dozen times with that silly fish. And it was made so easy because just ahead of the console, everybody's got a seat there. But on the Whirlcat, you actually pull a pin and it folds down. That gave us all kinds of room for Alex to move around and fight the fish. He was putting on quite a show. Inside the gunnel, right up in the bow area, is rod locker storage. Really convenient for when you're traveling or just underway and you don't want all your rods to get the salt water spray, they're hidden in the gunnel. Let me tell you, they've got fish boxes covered. There's big fish boxes in the stern for a long trip for big fish. You can also use the fish boxes under the seats up forward for a little shorter trip or maybe a different style of fishing. The console on this boat, just simple. You have room for a head, but you also have plenty of room for storage, which makes it nice. For me, a boat's a platform that you fish from. I want all the fishing features I can get, and this one had some neat ones. Everywhere you look, there was a drawer opening and a little door type opening. One place even had a door that opened for individual lures that you could mark and set them in their tubes. Absolutely classic tackle design. There's no kind of fishing tackle you could want to take offshore for a day that you can't store in the World Cup. The captain has to be comfortable too, and on the helm seating, you have a double wide custom seat. You have additional seating in the stern, which I really like. They're single seats, one on the port side, one on the starboard side. And again, fold away, open deck for fishing, pop them out for cruising. Another wonderful feature to have next to the swim platform is a freshwater shower. She had a 25 gallon tank of fresh water waiting for you. A center console design with a hard top Taco 380 Grand Slam outriggers. It's got a 40 gallon live well. I mean, this is set up in the more traditional center console fishing style and it fished really well too. So if you're a diver and a fisherman, they got you covered on both ends. All right, guys, we set out today. We said we were gonna fish. We were looking forward to see how the boat was gonna perform. Well, she did great. You know, if you're afraid to take on a ride of a catamaran, I mean, if you're just unfamiliar with it and it kind of freaks you out a little bit, it's definitely worth the time to get to know the characteristics of a boat like this because the, the upside of it is the ride is super soft, super dry. I mean, this is definitely something to consider. Yeah, if you're looking at an offshore boat to do some hardcore offshore fishing, the WorldCat 295cc may be the boat you spend the rest of your life fishing from. It's a dandy. Hey, if you'd like any more information about the boats you saw this week or any boat you see on Best Boat, check us out at the web at floridasportsman.com. Or we'll see you next week on another edition of Florida Sportsman Best Boat.